Hello and welcome to Inside Evo. I'm Henry Catchpole. As you can see, the beard is coming along quite well. Um, last time I had a chat about the Morgan, which I found some footage of on my laptop. And whilst I was looking for that, I also found some other old footage which I thought I'd inflict on YouTube, which is of a very, very special car called an M3 CRT. The background to this is that we went out to the Nürburgring and it was the 40th anniversary of BMW M and the big event that was there was generally very cool but also massively frustrating. We had access to just incredible cars. I mean there was sort of there was literally every M car you could possibly think of, but unfortunately when we drove them around the ring somebody had already crashed a car so it was all very, very sort of ducks and drakes and very slow and just a bit frustrating really. However, after that we got to drive the M3 CRT. It's special because, well, there are only 67 of them, so it's approximately half the number of um, M3 GTSs, the orange car that they produced. The CRT is basically like the GTS, but it's the E90 saloon um, body, which we've always preferred actually as a, a driver's car anyway. It's got the same engine as the GTS, so 444 brake horsepower and it's then got special coilover, adjustable suspension, uh, titanium exhaust, uh, all sorts of stuff's changed inside. If you look in the back, um, instead of having a sort of the three seats across the rear, they've got individual buckets, which is quite cool, and you've got bucket seats in the front with lovely, amazing carbon backs. And yeah, we had a few hours in the morning to drive it on the road, and it is just absolutely wonderful. It's, it's probably my favorite M3 ever, despite the fact it hasn't got a manual gearbox. And the extraordinary thing was, we'd been chasing this car for some time. We, we'd been told we're never going to get to drive it because it'd all been sold. They didn't need to um, do press drives of them. And bearing in mind, I had this car for probably three, four hours driving down the road. And it's a bit like that thing where you, you have a higher car or a new car and you, you think you, you never see these things on the road, but because you're driving one, you see them everywhere. This time, one of the other 67 cars was coming towards us. So two of the cars ever produced were in the same. We did a double take. Uh, the owner stops and we got a picture of the two cars together, which is, is quite fun. Anyway, it felt much more agile than the standard car, but still had the same balance with a bit more, uh, just a bit more to push against at the front, which is really nice in the uh, saloon. And I think it's just cooler being a saloon as well. The roads around the ring are really cool. If you go out to the ring, make sure you go and drive some of the roads around there as well because they're, they're well worth exploring. The car felt really, really agile, sort of almost uh, sort of anything this side, I suppose, of an, an Evo. Uh, Evo 8 or 9 um, wouldn't feel as agile as this. It was just amazing, but still with the sort of forgiveness of the E90 saloon and just an amazing engine quite short geared actually, it had the DCT gearbox in it. Um, so around some of the hairpins, uh, you actually only sort of needed almost sort of second, possibly even get away with third, uh, which is quite strange. Anyway, towards the end of the morning, I was obviously there. Uh, it was after everyone else had gone home from this, this BMW M festival. And I was driving back and I was thinking, well, I've got sort of, there was literally about sort of 10, 12 minutes before I had to have this car back at midday. They were sort of really strict on it. But I thought, well, I'll just go to the public, drive past the public car park just in case. You never know, the ring might be open. It probably isn't. And it wasn't. So I drove back through Nobog and I thought, oh, I wonder. So I went up to turn 13, which is where you go in for the pool days. And I, the gate was open, went in there. And there were three sort of elderly, elderly gentlemen standing around. And I sort of said, I'm with BMW, can I go out? And they sort of you know, straight the beards as I'm doing now and sort of looked at it and another chap came over and he sort of walked around it and sort of looked at it and then just nodded, took a cone away and I was ushered out onto the Nürburgring on my own, completely empty track, it's still got grease in places and thankfully I'd, I'd put a GoPro on and it's I'm, the footage is rubbish to be honest and um, but it was just one of the most brilliantly sort of felt like sort of breaking into school after hours, it was, it was incredible.
around the ring. Again, it was it was really good fun. Uh, NM3 is just sort of is perfect for Nurburgring. Green. Um, you could feel the weight, extra weight of the saloon potentially because it's still sort of 15, 80. It was only dispatchable carbon bits. It was still only I think about 25 kilos lighter uh, than the standard E90 M3 saloon. Um, but they did say it was probably it was because it had a greater spec on it. It was about 70 kilos lighter than that would have been. If that makes sense. So over some of the big compressions, you could still feel it sort of. Um, getting slightly out of sync with itself. It was a really, really cool car to drive down there. I came back in expecting to sort of have some irate BMW press man spitting feathers at me, but uh, it didn't, never happen. Handed it back and, and if that's my only experience with the M3 CLT, well, it was a pretty good one. Uh, it's just a shame it cost a hundred thousand pounds and they all sold out so quickly, but there we go. If you want to watch any more Inside Evo, like the Morgan one that I mentioned earlier, then click here. And if you fancy subscribing, which would be awfully grateful if you did, then please click there.